Tonight is our uh, fifth meeting of the Central Artery uh, Grand Parcels cover study. Before we begin, I just want to take note that Matt Conti of NorthamWaterfront.com is recording the meeting so that everybody's aware. Um, like I said, this is our fifth meeting, and I think that we've had a really productive process. We've been following the tripartite process established as part of the Central Artery. And uh, over the course of these uh, four and now five meetings, we've gotten some really good feedback on what the public uh, is interested in seeing happen on the cover parcels. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, we kind of just want to move into the presentation. Good. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't I feel see like that any, seems really quick, but... Yeah, no elected officials on no, the yet tonight? No, nobody else here yet, so... Oh. Well, no taxes. If anybody else shows up, let us know. So with cool. that, we'll turn it over to... Uh, Just one thing, if you haven't signed in, there's a sign-in sheet, copy of the agenda is there, and um, as always, the presentation will be posted on the VRM website with, um, with all the other uh, presentations that we've done to date. So, thank you. Matt? Yes. Since uh, John does so brief, yeah. what we've done, for those of you who have uh, attended all the prior meetings, the four, four prior meetings, we've worked to address a lot of the comments that we've had, so you can see some minor changes here and there. Matt's going to walk you through some of the stuff that tweaked here and there walk you through the current concepts as they are and we're going to walk through some of the comments that we've had on some of So, Matt, sure. Okay. So, um, I will do a kind of very quick overview of, of where we are. Um, we've incorporated a few of the comments, but I think we're at a stage right now where we're solidifying what we have for the purposes of our, our permitting going forward. John, we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later, but I think the spirit of what we're showing today is more about uh, kind of temporarily tying a bow on uh, what we believe to be a kind of reasonable consensus around a, uh, some concepts and to just frame a little bit some of the design work that we'll be doing um, as we move forward. Um, almost all of you look very, very familiar if I don't actually know you, so um, I'm going to go sort of fairly quickly. And if anyone wants me to slow down, raise your hand, but I, I don't want to torture you by painfully explaining where parcel 12 is located. Um, uh, these are our parcels, as you know. Um, very quick reminder, parcel 6 concept uh, involves uh, covering sort of as much as we can and uh, a series of nice pathways that connect the dots from one sort of corner to the sort of northernmost tip, if you will, of the whole greenway system. Um, uh, we have limitations on how much we can cover, uh, but we think that we can make a very nice sort of pedestrian experience that takes us up over the parcel. Um, some of the issues moving forward in terms of our design really relate to a couple of things. One is uh, what are the sort of key views from the parcel? Um, you can see that there's an idea that we would relate uh, some of this experience to the adjacent urban fabric like Stillman Street. Um, there's an idea for a large, nice sort of lookout here, uh, a big sort of promontory. Um, anyway, just putting a tag on some things that will be important uh, going forward as we design the actual elements that will screen the, the, the ramps. And then views of the parcel. Um, how do we strategically locate screening cover so that um, the pedestrian experience is enhanced all the way around and our sort of views are positively affected. Um, for the record, uh, to be clear, when we talk about views and screening or walls or cover, um, these things come in a whole spectrum of uh, flavors from everything from very, let's say, translucent light vegetation, something that's green, something that you can see through a little bit, to uh, at the other end of the spectrum, very opaque man-made materials, and then there's sort of everything in between. Um, I want to put this spectrum out here just to remind everyone that moving forward, uh, there will be a lot of design work to do to decide what sorts of solutions are appropriate to which part of the project. And there are maintenance concerns that come with that. There are aesthetic concerns, uh, safety, all of the above. 
But um, I put this out here not to suggest that we're going to put fish scales somewhere on the, on the artery, but that um, these are part of a, we want to approach this with a sort of wide bandwidth of, of solutions. Uh, a reminder of some of our quick views. Uh, this is looking south uh, from the very tip. Um, this, this heavy green mass here is a sort of block rough representation of some sort of greenery. Um, it's not a literal representation of a hedge. Um, but this gives you an idea of the sort of visual impact of this. Uh, obviously, these walls and other elements have to be defined by what they are materially. But um, this is to give you a sense of how this configuration sits on the street, how it connects, how this sort of pathway would sort of embark and what you would see from the ground level. And then this is looking uh, uh, north uh, from uh, sort of, uh, this, is, this is not correct here, but um, looking from the south, um, you can see the on-ramp there. Um, and you can see those paths that I described that come up to a sort of nice high point, um, which is a kind of nice viewing platform. But you can see that if I toggle back and forth, um, even that sort of low rise solution has quite a nice sort of visual, overall visual impact. <clears throat> Um, again, we, we mark green where we think that there's possibly a, uh, a green solution. Um, we're showing walls where we think we need walls or other sort of man-made surfaces. These things all have to be refined and designed, but uh, this is to give you a general sense of how this might come together. Um, a view from Stillman Street. Um, again, a rough idea of how we might uh, accent some relationship to the existing street fabric. So we imagine maybe in that long walkway that's above, uh, there's some sort of cut or view that you can see through. Um, if you see a pink wall, it's not literally a representation of a pink wall. It's a representation of a surface that we want to tag as being important and something that we want to pay attention to moving forward, something that might need some treatment. One of the hazards of going up and over these ramps is that uh, we need to get high up in the air. And so um, rather than looking across these things now, we will be actually seeing some walls and some surfaces um, that will need some, some sort of treatment. Um, and then this is a view looking uh, uh, towards the northeast. This is a sort of one of the, the key desire lines. Um, we imagine, again, in a very rough conceptual level, this is that path coming up that there's some opportunity for planting or other sort of thicker, maybe, uh, a vegetation that could be a visual amenity. And then this sort of terrace looking area may be a place that could accommodate some occupancy, some benches, some other kinds of plantings. Um, again, something to put on our sort of design agenda. And then that's that sort of lookout moment uh, that we described earlier. Um, and then a view across uh, parcel six from Haymarket. Um, this is that, that wall coming up. You can see the gray in the background representing the, the remainder of the wall in the background in the distance. So you can see it's actually quite high. Um, one issue that this brings up is how high do we want that wall to be? What, what should that surface be? Uh, for instance, in this scenario, we're showing that what if it really actually cuts down uh, and we more aggressively plant this edge. Those are things that we should talk about. Um, one of the key issues is um, how does that make, get maintained? How do we design something that is durable, will look attractive, and do what it needs to do to, in a sense, um, um, obscure our view of the ramps, but maybe not so much that it obscures uh, views of everything. Um, and then a rough view of our computer model. This is sort of hovering above the parcel looking north. This is that sort of triangular viewing platform that I described. These are the two paths that come down on either side. And this is just to give you a sense of where you are, uh, what it might be like to be here. You get a little sliver view of the Zagreb Bridge, um, but uh, definitely sort of a nice, interesting vantage point. And then hovering above the parcel looking south. So you can see there's that, that viewing platform right there. And we imagine that um, the way the the greenway opens up there that we get a very nice kind of spectrum of, of a nice vista there. Um, so this will be a sort of big important point uh, as we move forward designing this, how to make that a really nice 
place to, to pause, to sit, to view, um, things of that nature. So uh, looking at the various components, we sort of described various elements that are, might be important for our design moving forward, particular sort of screening elements. Um, number one is that edge, um, again, up against the Haymarket uh, and as you enter. And we've listed a few of the kind of issues that we think might be important to that moving forward. Um, and then we've also, you'll see on our sort of spectrum of solutions, um, down below, we've marked uh, some of the areas where some of these solutions might apply. So we looked at, for instance, there's an idea of some light vegetation um, in here along this wall, and then also some ideas of maybe screening some kind of physical wall um, to help moderate that, that sort of view. Um, and then there's a list here you see particular issues, um, what the density of the plantings are, <coughs> maintenance is an issue, what the particular heights are. Um, this sort of long element here um, uh, is a very important piece. Um, we imagine that maybe it's a little bit more on the man-made side. There isn't a lot of dimension there for plantings, if any. Uh, we don't think that a lot of plantings would be viable along this edge, so we need to think creatively about uh, other kinds of man-made solutions, how we might modulate views through those things. We talked about the view through Stillman Street. Um, uh, and how has that element become a nice sort of sculpt sculptural thing that can enhance uh, the walkway, but also quite literally protect these pedestrians from the experience and uh, um, the, the sort of proximity to that, that busy ramp um, to make that a sort of nice protected walkway. And then the third piece is an important design element. It's really uh, a little place where we have a sort of uh, cluster, let's say, that uh, we've got some room for plantings. Uh, this is an area that's right at the northern little gateway piece. Uh, this might be an important element that helps us define this entry moment as a kind of gateway. Uh, parcel 12, um, you may recall that we had a couple of solutions on the table. Um, uh, uh, in general, the scheme was to connect the dots from this corner up here up to some high point with the, the viewing deck, if you will, at that moment, and then path that takes you back down. We have two scenarios that are maybe still on the table, um, although we seem to be favoring one of them. But um, in one scenario, there's only one path that comes down here, and that's because uh, the platform here has been lowered or has been raised to a point that accommodates uh, some highway signage underneath it. Um, what we discovered in some of our due diligence is that if we uh, could lower this platform, move the signage outside that, um, that platform, and lower this platform, that we could get the grades and the handicap accessibility to work in such a way that we could get an additional pathway um, along the, the surface edge right there. Um, that, that, the sign. Almost in the same place that it is today. It's not like by adding the sign. This sign. Yes. Yes. So uh, we are it is exploring. The same. We are exploring the possibility of modifying the signs so that they have a smaller visual footprint, um, that they're not quite as tall, and that they have a less of an impact on the view. To see it in visualization. See the visualization. Um, so. Key issue from this parcel, obviously, are the sort of the key views from from the sort of viewing platforms, and then this parcel also intersects quite a few sort of cross streets and other kinds of moments, uh, and these are sort of important moments to consider the design uh, in terms of our experience of it. Again, a reminder that when we say screening or walls, that uh, we need to think about a fairly uh, we need to have a fairly wide definition of what those are. Um, it's still a kind of open question. Um, a quick view from North Street. Uh, that would be sort of the beginning of that path system. Um, there's an idea of a, some sort of a sloped landscape that might be partially occupiable. An idea that behind here, maybe that's a place for thicker plantings, um, things that are, are not quite so occupiable, but might have a sort of visual impact. 
um, a view from the Armenian Heritage Park. Uh, right now you can see these are the two edges of those ramps. Um, and then um, a view about our two path scenario that would sort of go up on either side of those, those ramps. Um, an idea about uh, showing actually what the signage might be like. Uh, but also, a, a sort of, we put out a question mark right there. There's some room right there that would be for plantings or other things. A view from Commercial Street. This is an important connection uh, from the north end. Um, this is the two path scenario where uh, the idea is that that additional path could be almost like kind of a nice and additional sidewalk or something that might help animate that side of the street. Whether we have that path on that side or not, we'll, we'll need to pay careful attention to what this edge uh, is like, what it looks like, and what that experience might be like. Um, and just for fun, a little reminder of what we used to see from Marshall Street. Um, it wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> um, uh, just to, this is, this is one of those streets actually where that impact really is, is pretty profound in terms of reconnecting the urban fabric um, this, is a, this is a sort of very choice moment in terms of accessing uh, Quincy Market and the whole sort of downtown. Um, and this is a, an important part of our sort of cover strategy should, you know, we think enhance that. Uh, a view from Fulton. Uh, Fulton is, uh, you know, tees into the surface here. Um, a little reminder of what that used to be like. There was not only the elevated, but there was an off-ramp that was really kind of um, front row and center. And you can see the Dock Square Garage is still visible behind. Um, this is a view uh, of the a kind of realistic depiction of the actual height that that uh, viewing platform is going to be at. And it's important sort of reality to confront, which is that if we are going to get up and over these ramps, that um, it will get pretty hot. So you'll see that the pink, again, is the wall that needs to be treated specially, but the top of that pink is the standing level, and then you can see the people above, and that white element is really sort of a rail height. Um, but the way this wall ends, we want to tag this as something, again, to study moving forward. Uh, does it slope back down as we're showing it here? Oh, this is also for reference, you can see. Um, does it step back down like this? What you're seeing is the, the other ramp cover coming down in the background. Um, what's the shape of that? Um, how does that impact the quality of the street, our views, that sort of thing? Um, so this, this depiction is with the two pads, which you say is lower than if it was just a single pad. Is that correct? This one is. A, that's a very good question. Um, I think this is the this is the one path option. Because it looks pretty steep. I think it's the I think it's the one path option because I'm not seeing the sign right here. And the one path option is steeper and higher than the two path option you said. One path option is higher. It's higher by a couple of feet. By a couple of feet. This is 14 feet. Yep. Approximately. It's it's not really steeper. What's right. missing is the path up against Cross Street in that one. We can't make it work because it is well. Yes, it is too steep, so we couldn't get a path to work on that side. So in fact, I think this is the um, this is a two path option based. I can see based on this rail that's coming down the side. Yeah. Right. It's a good question, and I wish something we should verify. So suffice it to say that with the, with the one path option, uh, the signage would be underneath, and that thing would be a couple feet higher. We think that the two path, the one path option might be lower than what we're representing here. If this is a two path, no, the two path is lower. Correct. I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> two path is lower because we pulled the sign up and it's lower, so we can yeah. meet the grades. If we had the one path option, it has to be higher because the sign would be underneath, but we wouldn't be able to meet the grades. That's why we wouldn't have the second path. So do you right. do you want to see that in plan view? Or do you need to know? I'll take your word for it. Okay. <laughs> Step back. Um, this is a view hovering above our sort of rough computer model, but you can see that sort of viewing area looking north. Uh, this is a this is a two path option because you can see the 
pull the signage out. Um, but you can see that the signage is a little bit shrunk from what it is today. The idea would be that we would make that as minimal as the federal government would allow us uh, to minimize the impact of those signs. Uh, but this gives you a kind of sense of where you are in the city and um, the kind of view that you might have looking north. It's kind of nice. Um, and then south is even better. Um, this is that sort of viewing platform here. And as we've shown you before, uh, very beautiful views of the Custom House Tower, um, of the rest of the, the green light here. Um, you might even get a nice peek through um, Christopher Columbus Park. Um, and you'll see also that this is a modified sign as well in the foreground. We think based on some of our analyses that it really won't have much of a visual impact. It won't diminish the, the experience of being up there. Just, just so we're clear, this goes back to a couple of meetings ago when we had a long discussion on signage. We met with our state highway engineers and they, these sizes they've accepted. Everything gets reviewed by FHWA, so we are hopeful hopeful that the review that our state traffic engineer has done we will allow it to go to the federal highway, but should they say they need to go back to the two feet high the ladder. But we did eliminate things like the lighting stuff. Today the signs of all the lights don't work, they are if there are lights there and that adds a lot of structure to the signs and those we, those do not need to be there. That's a that's a given because no no other signs are lighted on the highways. So that does that in itself makes the signing structure small and less intrusive. Yeah, Bob. Can we go back to slides and three slides on the commercial street view? see through it and it won't be completely opaque. So also there's no not cross fans. It's a cross it here. Right. Yeah there's so this no this side. photo is taken from the middle of the street. No black fans. No no no. no. Uh, Rock brings up a good point which is that this view is from the middle of the street. Um, the uh, yeah, sorry. It's like being in a church before uh, <laughs> The, the, there is no crosswalk here currently, so the real pedestrian experience would be here where we're really maintaining that, that sort of through feeling. But that's, I think it's a good observation and something to be mindful of. Um, well, is this just knowing the history with the neighborhood of the So it's not where the pedestrian is crossing, it's the view of the commercial street not having some blocking. So yes. that you can see right through. You can see through. So that, Bobby, that would be important. You know, we're going to carry the one ramp, the one walkway in, two-way walkway option forward. We're not making that decision now. Um, as we go into the MEPA process, we're going to go in with both, and that presumably that we get the okay to move forward. And during design, those are things that we'll talk about. And if 
we stay with the two um, walkway option, what that material will be. That's why um, when you show when Matt was showing the different types of screening, we're also looking at different types of materials for these, you know, for lack of a better term, the walls or the sides of the ramps. We can't not have nothing there so that someone can just fall off the side into the street. But it doesn't have to be a concrete wall or, or solid. All right. Keep it in the back of your head. Yeah. Yep. Let's keep it in the front of our head. That's, that's, that's on the front of our head. <laughs> um, yeah, so a view, a view from that top of those, those, uh, those sort of viewing platforms to give you a sense of where you are and the kinds of views that you have. Um, we've also sort of begun to break this down to a series of sort of important design elements that you want to tackle. Uh, moving forward, um, I mentioned there's a kind of little triangular piece here. Whether we have a two ramp or one ramp option, there's a, a little opportunity here for some sort of greenery. Um, uh, one issue, again, uh, is, if, is if we're looking at views through, that will be one of the things that will impact the design of that. Um, we think this is a place for light vegetation, um, something to consider. Um, this edge, what we're calling number two, has a sort of different responsibility. We're really close up to the ramp. So we're thinking that that wants to be something that is um, probably not green, it's probably man-made. And uh, one of the key issues will be how high does that edge want to be? Do you want to be completely blocked? Or is it something that's handrail height that you can see over and through, even at the expense of perhaps experiencing some of the traffic below? These are the things that uh, we'll have to balance. Um, number three is another sort of similar to the number one area, um, uh, an opportunity for plantings that could be, um, let's say, visual amenity. There's probably opportunities to create some occupiable space in there, um, but that's a nice opportunity. One of the issues that will be impacted here is are the sort of views from vehicles coming out. There's some safety concerns about visibility. Uh, that's one of the many considerations we'll have to think about. Uh, and then we also uh, think that the, this, this wall, which is most of which, a lot of which is already existing, but which will be made, parts of which will be made taller to accommodate some of these covers. Um, as a service in and of itself, it should be considered. Is it something that gets planted on? Is it something that, uh, you know, in the past it's been used as a kind of armature for public art? Um, that's something that we want to think about carefully as well. Um, and then this is a special wall. We, we discussed this when we were looking at views um, uh, from, from this street right here. Um, how high does that want to be? Does it want to be something that's sort of discreet? Uh, or do we want it to be large, something that tapers down, something that's loud? Um, again, that's a kind of an important part of this whole equation, even though it has no, there doesn't seem to be any sort of space, let's say, for greenery, but um, how do we modulate that experience so that uh, this is a nice sidewalk experience? John, yep. give it back to number four. Yep. I talked about this before I left the floor three months ago. You should, you should. I don't want to wait long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried about that ramp because that ramp, when the cars come out of that, I told traffic, I told you to check on the traffic study, put a yellow caution light down there. People are going to get killed at that, at that intersection. It's a very dangerous. They come flying out right, of that right ramp. Right here? Yeah. Where number four is, right? Yeah, yeah. They come flying out of that ramp. And purposely, when we did the Armenian, the Armenian path, I put the water fountain on this side. People will be crossing. It would be blocking it, but I noticed when you walk across that street, somebody's going to get wiped out. We can put a caution sign a little way down so they can slow down. They don't slow down coming out of there. Very good. Yeah. We, we can talk to our traffic people about that. Yeah. Yeah. Independently. Yeah. That is in the back. If they're going to close it off more, it's going to be probably more dangerous. Yeah. And we will. So there's a traffic signal there, is that right? There is that, yeah, so it's too, it's too late when they come out. Yeah. We, we will, before we, before we go, we finalize at the end of this, 
our traffic people will be very closely looking at anything that we do around sight lines and stuff. The state, the same state traffic engineer that's reviewed the signage and stuff. It's why, you know, we had these great ideas. I'm like, oh, let's take this sign and make it like this, and let's move it over here. And then they come back and say things like, you can't see around the curve, and if you do this, you gotta add that. So we will re-review that with them. But I'll also just bring up the issue for them now. Need to wait. Like, it is dangerous. I, I, I think it's standing there. I agree with you. But that's, it's, it's almost, uh, you know. Anything that we might add or squeeze around this project, around the ramps and crossing, we'll just they will review. But I'll also just bring them up to it to see if they have a chance to design anything they can think of. It's really coming up very steep, steep, you know, from ground up to the surface. I think that was one reason. Or they don't see the light as it is. Yeah, it's just really very, very dangerous place. Well, maybe we can convince more pedestrians not to even use that, but to actually hey. enjoy a nicer pathway. Pedestrians don't listen to the sign. They don't look at the sign. <laughs> they, they might want to go. It's a combination of the two. And also, that view is good. I mean, you can't take that pedestrian away, away because it's a view is quite important from the corner to, you know, in the both way to north to south, south to north. The view from this, this spot? Yes, it's very important because it gives a very beautiful perspective of the entire roadway. Yes, well, you'll see even more. Perceptively, I mean, you know, visually. Yeah. It's very important. Well, the, the pathway that you're proposing mm -hmm. would serve as a short path through around that intersection. So you wouldn't even necessarily have to have a crosswalk across the open yes. tunnel. Yes. We're not going to remove any crosswalks, but you're right. The idea is, is that you won't really need to cross there. You can use this walkway system to go from point eight. And to get an even better view. And if, if people remember those who are here for this whole thing, one of the things that we looked at is how many crossings we eliminate, right. you need to cross. And this is one of those by using, whether we have one walkway or two, we eliminate the need for you to cross. Well, if you make the wait for the, the walk sign long enough, that would uh, <laughs> train people <laughs> open that way. Now we're getting out of the scope of the <laughs> but, but that is a key factor, is that um, same with parcel six, it's, it's, it's less crossings here that we eliminate than parcel six. It's like five crossings we eliminate. But in this one, that is one of the key ones that, while it'll still be there, you don't need to do that in order to cross. I think that also the, the, the spirit of this, yes, this some of these provide you with maybe a slightly more direct route or you don't have to cross, but part of it is about stitching together the overall greenway and just making that a nicer experience so that um, you may recall that in our design analysis that this, this parcel was a kind of stumbling block that, that if you were walking up, you had a very nice continuous experience and then suddenly you had to either like go around the parcel or there was sort of something abrupt. And um, I think the spirit of this is to really make a nice continuous path but also to provide a kind of a little, uh, a little mini destination up top where there'd be a nice view. Um, and number five, uh, quickly on parcel 18, um, our, our focus really has been mostly, um, some of the discussions we've had has been on this, this edge here along the surface artery. Um, it's the place maybe where the ramps become most exposed. Um, we think that this parcel, uh, from a landscaping perspective and from a kind of pedestrian experience perspective is um, people give it quite high marks. Um, it was actually designed as a landscape parcel, so um, there's a pretty rich array of plantings. There's a kind of nice experience going through. We think that the improvements here are really about providing some refinements in some key areas. Um, these are a little bit small, but there's an idea about um, along that sort of western edge of the parcel, uh, maybe enhancing some of these plantings um, along this edge to enhance <coughs> that whole street experience. Um, Plantings that are maybe just tall enough to make that a little bit nicer, but not so tall that you completely obscure the views of all the plantings that are behind it. Um, and this is a view, um, if you're coming south, there's a moment 
where the, the sort of well for the ramp almost comes right out to Purchase Street. And um, what we are proposing is that along this edge that we could enhance some of the plantings and that there is a little <coughs> area here, a planting area, where um, some nice enhancements could occur to make that a better experience. Um, so as I mentioned, it's really, it's really that edge. Um, and we imagine that it's, it's a, that there's really primarily a kind of vegetation solution there that's possible. There's a little bit of, um, there's some plantings that are there already that could be enhanced, and then um, there is some greenery here that could really enhance that corner. Um, and I'll hand this off to Rob. That's fine. Let Matt do all the talking today. A <laughs> um, couple of things that I wanted to reiterate in that the, um, before we get into the comments, Matt talked a lot about things that we have to look at later, things that we know we want to study a little bit more. And so I'll remind you, of, you know, the purpose of this thing was to look at cover alternatives we could take to MEPA and actually get them to say, yep, we like what you're doing. Now we can go out and design it. Con concepts. Concepts. John, correct. Sorry, thanks. <laughs> I say things wrong. Um, so the next step, the next stage, once we get the concepts, you know, approved and we have this authorization to move forward, would be to start looking at colors, materials, textures, you know, define the rail type systems that, you know, that, that won't, you know, damage views. And, you know, those are the things that we look forward to getting into. But for now, we, we're trying to get these concepts move forward, accepted, so that we can go forward with the vision. The key to this study was to get something that's acceptable to the public and to NEPA. And so we labored through these five public meetings with us to get a keen understanding about what's going on. Does that mean we have to leave? <laughs> oh, that's his phone. <laughs> Let me guess. It's a lot louder when it goes off. <laughs> um, if you remember from the last public meeting that we had, uh, it was a formal comment period that opened up after that. And so we solicited comments. We got a number of comments that came in. And what we did here is we kind of summarized uh, where, where all those comments fell. In very general terms, what we got was a lot of positive response for the direction that we headed in, for the concepts that we're proposing, the cover options. You know, folks didn't want to see buildings. They wanted to see Greenway Extension Park connect north and to, you know, the Greenway and, and to uh, uh, Chinatown. So we see a lot of this. That's what, a lot of what was represented in the comments that we got and that we're moving in the right direction. We have a good, we're doing a good job. Um, an acknowledgement that we're going in the right direction to propose what we're doing and providing these pedestrian amenities or these little moments that Matt has described. And then there were some specific things, specific comments that, that folks had on each parcel. Um, so what that gave us, you know, was a view that there truly is a general consensus, you know, among this group, among the public, among the elected officials and the stakeholders, be it the Greenway Conservancy and, and the, the various um, community groups that we've met with community members, stakeholder groups, elected officials, they all support the concepts as developed and concur with moving forward on the notice of project change. That's really what we were trying to get to today, to this point, was, okay, we're going in the right direction. Now we're going to take it, move it forward, go to, go to MEPA, prepare a document, and be working heavily with the environmental folks at the DOT now to, you know, to try to get something move forward into the system so we can get this authorization and then step forward to the final design. So what's next, you ask? What's next? There you go. The next steps would be, um, now i got to sharpen my pen, we're going to go into this reporting phase. Okay. Uh, we have to prepare a report that summarizes everything that we've been doing for the last year, which is going to be a lot of fun to pull all that together. Um, and it's going to summarize everything that we've been through, the issues that have been defined, estimates that have been done, public process that we've been through. One of the things that we are now stepping through is the air quality analysis. Now we have to find what we think we want to cover on these ramp portals. What's the effect going to be on air quality? That's one of the due diligence things that we need to move through now. We're in the process of pulling somebody on board to look at that um, and what that's going to mean for us moving forward. And, and all of that needs to be done to support this uh, uh, notice of project change document that has to go into modify the environmental document and approvals that we're giving back. The environmental process involves a series of federal and state approvals. Uh, on the federal side, the NEPA reevaluation letter is a document that is going to have to be prepared and submitted so that that can be evaluated on the federal, on the federal end. And on the state side, it's the MEPA process, 
the Environmental Policy Act, where we have to submit the notice of project change, and that will mo now modify the 1991 uh, certificate uh, for the Greenway parcel filing. Uh, there's a comment period that goes along with that. There may or may not be a public process that goes with that. Um, and then out of that, we hope to get certification, and then we can begin the design phase. So there's a little bit of work that has to occur, so there's gonna be a little bit of a lull between tonight and when you have to act, might actually see something a little bit more on this project. So we'll look ahead as we get into the design phase. After we get through all this MEPA stuff and we submit the report, we get our approvals to move forward. Uh, this preliminary design phase that we step in where we basically have to go in and, and, and take another look at all of the stuff that we went through through this process, all the design elements, the design criteria, re-verify that the traffic engineers are gonna be okay with what we're doing with the signage, look at ADA compliance, make sure our ramps work, um, electrical lighting design, fire protection, there's a lot of other stuff that we really didn't get into a lot of detail in this. It has to be considered as part of the design process. It's gonna take some time to get through that. And at that time, the, the public process will resume. Get this light to work. So we're gonna be back in front of this group again at that time where we have a little bit more information to share. We'll engage the public again and say, this is the direction we're now heading in. And Kind of rails that we're picking out now. What do you think? When is that? When is that? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Give us another minute. Um, and along through that process goes final design, where we, we go through refining all of that and ultimately put bid packages out for construction. Uh, when? Here's what we're assuming for a schedule right now. So this is based on the best information that we have. And this is in the back of your agenda. So the, we're going to go into this report preparation phase and do the air quality analysis. The, the air quality analysis is probably going to take a little bit of time to get through. So, you know, that summer, whether it becomes fall, not really sure yet. You know, when you say air quality test, air quality analysis of the tunnel with the ramps on? Yes. Yes. What we're, we're proposing. So remember when we when we first started going to all this, we went back and looked at the original air quality studies, and you know, we said like, oh, we can cover this much with the ramp without. You know, changing the the, um, the systems, and etc. Well, now that we actually have something that we're proposing, we, we're having our air quality people actually go back and look at that and look at all the requirements. And there are some new requirements that weren't around back when that was done in the late '80s, early '90s. So we got to go and have this all evaluated. Should there be any major changes required because of that, we will let you know that before we go to me. But because this was done before we filed. But noise mitigation and, and pollution reduction aren't uh, the objectives of the ramp coverings. It's more of just aesthetics and development of the parks and parks. That's correct. But now, as part of due diligence and as we're making this filing, the notice of project change to me, but that's one of the questions is going to be how does this affect air quality in that area with pedestrians? And so we have to answer that question. So we're going to go through it. Well, it would make it worse. It would all make it better, right? Well, we don't. You're not putting people on top of the ramps when they're not there today. So that was what has to be looked at. There ain't nobody standing on top of the ramp, literally right there. Constantly. And things have changed. I mean, so our, our job now is to work, you know, with the professionals and have to look at, you know, what the current traffic is doing. Is it better or worse? Are emissions better or worse than they were back? You know, when the original studies were done, and, and to model that and evaluate it. So we're hoping and expecting that there'll be a filing in the summer or fall of 2015, but a lot of that depends on what happens between now and when we can actually make that filing. Um, there'll be a comment period uh, after that filing is made. The certification we're hoping is going to be in winter of 2015, and then we go into design. And that design phase and, and a, a restarted public process, uh, once we get to that point, it will be between So that's really the end of the formal presentation. There, um, it's a website here. You can uh, you have this information, I think, on your agenda. But certainly, this is where we've been housing all of the presentations that have been made today. So you can get online. You can check out all the presentations that we made and see all the technical information that backs up what we've done. Um, there's also a link here to the MEPA filing uh, website, so you can get on that, and take a look at the status of that, whatever that filing is made. You should be able to get an update on that. And also. 
Lauren and John, we were talking about periodically providing updates as well to yeah, the public. Yeah, I mean, at any point where there's a milestone, we'll send an email out. So we should have most of your emails. Yes. If we don't, can you please remember to sign in before you leave? Because yeah, we may not be again for a while until we get this process moving. Um, you know, but certainly if you have questions, if you have inquiries, that you can. And feel you can free call to reach out to you, John or I. So John's information is here. Lauren's information is here. Fine. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that we let people know when we're filing. We won't have to keep checking. But once we file with them, then checking their website will give you a status of where they are. Um, and it's up to them how they want to move forward. So sometimes they have scoping sessions with they'll have a public meeting, and sometimes they But they almost always have a public comment area, my correct yes. So, And those public comments go to them. So with that, um, I'll get I'll get you one. Right. With that, um, we'll, go to, we'll go to questions. Um, I got one more slide to share first. Yeah, this is not a John sanctioned slide. <laughs> so I made the mistake of handing us a pile of photos from 1994. So this is John back in 1994 ripping down portions of the art. I, mean, I couldn't resist it. That's, that's, that's a good shot. That, and that's like Apostle 6. Yep. That's right, right across right, 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 right here is Castanetti's bar. Is that Gerber in your backyard? <laughs> I actually have not that one, but I have a piece about this high. It weighs about 200 pounds. Just so you'll never forget. Yeah. But you could not fun. let that go without getting a piece of it. You make fun, but this is a great testament to the longevity of folks that have been involved in this process and the passion that they've had for seeing this succeed between Bill and John and Skip, even, who have been involved in this process for 20 years. Literally 20 years. Oh, Dave, and Tom. You know, many of you as well. <laughs> Our first meeting was in my house. <laughs> so with that, now, question. Yeah, well, all right, so we go through all the process, everything is agreeable with us. All your plans are done. How do we get the money? <laughs> oh, what gift do we have? We don't have the money. I know the money's not there. <clears throat> we have to apply for it. So are we talking about four or five years? I, I, so, we so we don't have an answer for that. The answer is, is money for design. This is funded through design. When we're finished, should we, first we get out, assuming we got our MEPA approvals, we're funded through design <coughs> to do all the design work. At that point, um, you know, the, assuming it's the way it is today, there is what's called a capital investment uh, plan that is a five-year plan that's put out, a rolling plan that's put out by MassDOT. And capital investment projects can have to compete with each other because it's a fiscally constrained document. It's not unlimited. Um, and these projects, um, assuming at some point they'll probably, 6 and 12 will probably split up for cost reasons. Um, and so they will then compete against other projects. And, you know, we're, we're Roughly looking at three years from now for us to get to that point, maybe a little bit longer. So I can't. I, I don't have. It. I can't. It, that that will be the process of some. But you can use the mitigation process from the beginning. Maybe put these on the top of the list. I, I, I'm, <laughs> what I'm getting at. I hear you, and, and, and I can say, I can say, I, I can say, because they've asked us this, and they've heard your elected officials are well aware of that. They they know. And, you know, there are, I, I just can't say that I have the ability to say this project goes first and it don't. We, we don't know what will be there at the time, but um, obviously people know the importance of this. And? Uh, John, could you or Lauren sometime around midsummer or something give us some sort of a progress report in terms of timing? Um, I heard you say you'll let us know probably when you're actually with you will, uh, we will. I assume that you you like similar comments so that you get support and it reflects that you've had a good public process. But if we could have an update before we get that notice of now we filed, so we have a sense of where you are. So if it should take longer than you think, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll give some caveat. It's not a problem. Absolutely. So just looking at your anticipated project schedule. It, what you're saying, I think, is um, uh, 
Uh, public meeting number six probably won't be before the end of the year. Is that a reasonable sometime probably end of next year? And you said something about 18 to 24 months. I didn't quite catch that. What was that time reference? The actual design, design process will take that long. From once get once to a point it, where from, we from have preliminary to final, or yeah. once it's finalized. Once we get a decision from MEPA, go 18 to 24 months from there. Okay. It'll take that long until we have construction documents that can be paid on. Because we do our design, right? And we do our design that they all, we also have to have somebody that actually makes construction documents that are paid. So assuming funding for whatever we decide on the design comes through miraculously somehow. Construction wouldn't start until 2018 at the earliest, potentially. And then, uh, you know, both contracts go together, one contract goes first, we don't know yet. But rough, but rough you know, these are rough time frames. Yes, Tom? Full design through construction documents are paid for. Is that right? Uh, Find it through design. That's all through design. Through design. Yeah. So that'll include preparing documents. Right. And that's state money. State. Sorry? State is paid. That's state money. That's correct. Anyone else? Just I have curiosity. Back up way back on the conceptual effort for the whole greenway thing. Yeah. There was 75% open space, 25% for development. Now, sometimes the feds just look the other way, I don't care anymore because possibly six now is just gonna be like a half of the, that's, that's the notice of project change we're aspiring. Okay, so to change, to change that six and 12 will go from development to open space. So that, that's what so we're at that point the feds could say because they had spent so much of the money on the project that some other part of the greenway would have to be converted to development. It, it's actually more of a legal question at Federal Highway one day. That's what I was curious. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not an HWA issue, it's a NEPA issue. Um, okay. And the, the commitment was initially 75%, but in one of the NEPA certificates, um, going on the land use plan. The land use plan was basically approved as satisfying whatever commitment needed to be made. So at that point, you know, people stopped calculating square feet and stuff like that. It was this part was open, that one was not, this one is, that one is. Uh, and in that calculation, this always was open, so I think it's never made up. Okay, so there wouldn't have to be some other area sacrificed in the future. Okay. And, and as John says, yeah. the, the MEPA filing would, would basically say, you know, this is what it was, this is what we're proposing going forward, is that okay? And I can't see that it wouldn't be acceptable because it's gonna it's gonna make as it's gonna increase open space, not decrease it. Yeah, adding open space. I think the space. concern was more the other way. Right. Well that's what I was worried that yeah. you would end up all development. So I think yeah. less development. Well that, that's yeah. better. that's why I was just and if we get out of curiosity. If we get a, if we get the about. answer like yes, go ahead, then it's not like yeah. they're gonna come back next week after that and then say Oh, now you have to do the thing on the answer us there and give us the answer and then Good. Okay. Thank you. You can justify that it's less money now than we're not doing development. So, yeah. so we have someone else's money. Else's money. The same. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyone else? If not, thank you all very much.